which is Jeff. Hey, how's everyone doing? Hello. Yesterday, in my devotional time, time we read the Bible, we pray, it was about joy and smiling. It was a cool devotion. As a matter of fact, it was tremendous. Because you know what I decided I was going to do? It said, you know, when you smile at someone, my mom used to say, you smile at someone, you're sending them love. And then the devotion talked about the importance of joy in the Lord and smiling. In fact, that when you smile to somebody, it's another way to give them a non evasive hug. I don't know if that makes sense or not. So yesterday when I got to work, I thought I was just going to smile at everybody. And I had one person say, man, you're creeping me out with a smile. <laughs> But I just had to go smile. So I just went around smiling at everybody. And it was fun because I had all my staff people, you know, I said, Helen, what is going on here? You got to have a break or smile a little bit. I made a good decision because I found that when I was smiling, other people responded with a smile. And before long, the attitude of gratitude started growing. Are you with me on that? And I'm telling you, there's nothing worse than being around someone that's clean and sober, but they're grumpy, and they're living dirty, and they're feeling horrible, and they're not doing anything to be connected to Christ. Would you agree with me on that? And so, let me, let me ask you, have you ever heard some, someone say something like this? My best decisions put me in the worst places for bad results. Have you ever made what you thought was a good decision, but it ended up being disastrous? Anyone know anything about that here? Okay. And so what I'm going with it is, is the fact that so many times we think we know better than God. Here's a couple of quotes for you. Without reflection, we go blindly on our way, treating more unintended consequences and failing to achieve anything useful for our lives. How about this one? One of Satan's most deceptive and powerful ways of defeating us is to get us to believe in lie. And the biggest lie is that there are no consequences to our own doing. Satan will give you whatever you ask for if it will lead you where, you, where he ultimately wants to get you. To hell. How about this one? To be certain of God means that you are uncertain in all your ways. We do not know what a day may bring forth. This is generally uh, said with a sigh of sadness. It should rather be an expression of breath, breathless expectation. Let me ask you, are you breathless and expecting God to do something really big in your life? Or are you just going about your sobriety in the same old way that you've been doing it? I had an insight that came to me. I was praying and talking to God, and I was reading about revival. And the word revival means to be revived, right? And so it's kind of like when revivals take place, uh, cultures would change, people groups would change, economics would change, but people's conditions spiritually would change. A lot of sobriety came forth from revival. So I'm saying, God, why is a revival taking place? And he says to me, Jeff, it's not an event. It's about a condition of your heart. Did you get that? So here we are tonight, a new day. And this is not an event. This is about the condition of our heart. Are you going to continue to think you're making good decisions but have bad results? Are you willing to let God lead you for your sobriety for good results? Now, here are some things I just want to kind of throw out here. You have to do something different if you want to reach your God-given potential through your sobriety. <laughs> would, you get, would you agree with me on that? Let me say it again. You have to do something different if you want to reach your God-given potential and fulfill your God-given destiny. See, I believe God has destined each and every one of us for something greater and better than what we've ever been through. Revival is not an event, it is a condition of the heart. If you want to be on fire for God, then let God's fire fall on you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, God declares, 
plans for welfare and, and, and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. How many times have you ever lost hope and not think you've had a future? How many times have you had a moment where you focus on what you lost and not what you're gaining through your loss? Have you ever been there? Have you felt so horrible, so bankrupt, that you didn't think that there was any way you would be able to get up and do it again? I love welcoming people at Community Health Link Detox. I say, I'm glad you're here. Are you going to help us help you? No shame coming in. You see, the devil does all that he can to promote shame and destruction. Jesus comes to remove the shame and give us construction, to reconstruct so we can live the life that we need to live. My best decisions led me to bad places for bad consequences. We also need to stop spending all our energy making plans for God and start seeking God, allowing Him to make the plans for ourselves. Did you get that? I'm going to say it again. We need to stop spending all our energy making plans for God. We need to start seeking God and allow Him to make the plans for our lives. This is what I found for myself. Some of the biggest breakthroughs in my life have come from me seeking God and then all of a sudden He catapults me into a place where I'm fulfilling His plan for my life. It's remarkable. I, it's unpredictable. It's exhilarating. It's incredible. And if He'll do that for me, He will also do it for you. God, I've got plans for you. Like, who am I to tell God how it should be? He's made, he's made you for something greater. Here it is. In Jeremiah 29, 13, he says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Let me repeat that. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. So let me ask you, if you're in a relationship, do you want a portion of their heart or all of their heart? Do you want a little bit of a commitment or a whole lot of a commitment? That's my question. If you want a whole lot of God, then seek God wholeheartedly. If you want a little bit of peace of God, then just give Him a little bit. The beautiful thing about God is, if you give Him a little bit, He'll take it and He'll run with it to do something greater for you than you can do on your own. Seek God with all your heart. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, And don't lean on your own understanding. I don't know about you, my own understanding got me in the worst places. So trust in God, apply your heart, lean not on your own understanding, acknowledge Him in all your ways, it doesn't say some of your ways, but all of your ways, and you'll make your path straight. How about this one? Faith is embracing uncertainty. We addicts and alcoholics, or any human being doesn't like uncertainty, but the one that is certain about the uncertainty is God. We have a lot of things that are uncertain. It says in Hebrews 11, 6, Without faith it is impossible to please Him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists, and He can reward those who earnestly seek Him. That word earnestly means diligently. It means pursuing Him tenaciously. It means I'm going to keep going no matter what. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to pursue Him. I'm going to seek Him. And my faith is going to expand and develop and grow where I can do greater things I've done before because I know if God's in it, it's going to happen. If I'm in it and God's not out of it, it ain't going to happen. So what happens is we have puny sobriety and we live a puny life because we we have allowed our faith to be puny and not expand and grow. Are you puny? Are you willing to expand and grow? How about this one? Following Christ reduces spiritual uncertainty, but it doesn't reduce circumstantial uncertainty. I'm going to say it again because I just lost half of you. Following Jesus Christ reduces my spiritual uncertainty. Meaning, if I have Christ, I have everything. If I don't have Christ, I have nothing. It means if I die, I go to heaven. 
I know where my home is. But it doesn't reduce circumstantial uncertainty. Jesus said this, I am the light of the world, and whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Have you ever walked in darkness and knew it was so dark you couldn't see your way out because you couldn't see nothing? And if someone was going to shine the light for you, you just weren't seeing it because you were so full of darkness, you weren't open to it. Usually that happens because we're prideful. Pride comes before a fall. How about this one? Your explanations are more important than your experiences. While you cannot control your experiences, you can control your explanations. Now let me tell you what I mean by that. We addicts and alcoholics, are, are, we tend to pride ourselves in telling lies and not telling the truth. you agree with me? We manipulate and intimidate people to get our way, and sometimes because we feel insecure about ourselves, we promote an image of who we want people to think we are, when we're really not who that, who that person is. But the sad part is, experiences will come and go, but we need to understand who we are. The ex only explanation I can give you about me is that I am a, a follower of Christ, and my identity is found in Jesus Christ, not in Jeff. And if I allow my identity to be found in Jesus Christ, then I can say, I can go from saying, hi, I'm Jeff, I'm an addict, to now I can say, hey, I'm a follower of Christ. I, I'm Jeff, I'm in recovery. So what happens is, sometimes we get so caught up into experiences, and we may have one God moment or a spiritual awakening here and there, and so we're waiting for God to do another one just like it, but usually the next one isn't like it, because if it was, we get bored with it, and we get bored with God. We need to be willing to give a reason for the hope that we have in Christ. I need to be willing to tell you how I have sobriety with the Savior. How Jesus has set me free. How I can have the life I need to live. I can fulfill my God-given purpose. And if I can do that, you can too. Why do we have commitments? What are we committed to? We're committed to sobriety. We share about spiritual awakenings. We inspire people that are discouraged. And it reinforces who we are in Christ and who we're becoming. Experiences come and go, but we need to be able to give an explanation to God, to ourselves, and other people why we follow Christ. How about this one? 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. <laughs> now how about this one? Some of your experiences won't make sense on this side of eternity, but be open-minded to let God connect the dots in ways that you can't explain. Now this is my question for you. Already I'm seeing some of you are already gone. Do you want sobriety with substance? This sticks to you, to your bones, to your soul, to who you are. That wherever you go, there's so much of sobriety and so much of Jesus the Savior in you that it just spreads like wildfire on other people that come across you. Do you want that? That only comes by being connected to Christ. In Romans 12, it says, Do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed. We need transformation. How do we transform? But by the renewing of our mind, that testing may be discerned that the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now here's the coconut on the dog. It's easier to get sober with sober people. It's easier to follow Christ with others that are following Christ. People do what they value and value what they do. Did you get that? People value, people do what they value, value what they do. Here's a major question for you. What do you value in your sobriety? Are you willing to say no to an early relationship? Are you willing to say no to maybe overworking yourself so you can have more time with God and work on your sobriety and work on you?
As God sent Jesus to help us, Jesus is sending us to help others. That's why we're going to break up in groups here in the morning. In a moment, in a moment. Not in the morning, but in a moment. And, and this is where we get together, we transparent, we share. What we're talking about here stays here, right? Do I get here, here? Yeah. And we share, we pray, we encourage one another. Lou Hope says this. Ability is what you're capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do, but attitude determines how well you do it. Do you have an attitude like Christ? Are you willing to give your all to God like Jesus gave his all to you? Is this just another meeting or are we really willing to change? Am I willing to change? I mean, there's more yet that God wants to do to change me. I haven't arrived. I'm not the all star here. I'm just like you. I'm hungry for more sobriety, more significance. I can only have that, but Jesus has my Savior. That's the truth. That's the truth. Some days are better than others. The days are not so good reminding to appreciate the ones that are. But even my worst days are better than what I thought my best days were when I was in active addiction. Because Jesus is there. Wherever I go, He's there. All I have to do is just be aware of the fact that Jesus is here. So let's go back to this. If you want revival in your life, it's not an event. It's about abiding in Christ and inviting Jesus to come deeper into your life to change you, to lead you, and to turn your world upside down, upright, so you're on fire helping other people get on fire for the Lord. People will drive for miles to see people burning for Jesus. Are you hot on fire? I am. My goodness, I am. The flame is hotter than it's ever been before. And so here we are tonight. The question I have for you is what are you walking away with so far? Maybe you walk away with something really large that you get from a group. Maybe someone will pray for you. Maybe it's a cup of coffee and a conversation. And maybe someone's showing up in a restaurant when you just don't think they're going to be there and you're struggling. That happened, didn't it? So what I'm going with it is, God works in incredible ways. Now here's a verse in the Bible I struggle with. You ready for this, Louis? Here it is. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, God knows the secret things. And I want to say, I want to know what's going on, God. But sometimes it's his secret. And we have to go along for the ride to trust him. To help us grow up. To learn to make good decisions, just to give our will over to His will, so we can experience Him fully. Because the best decision I've ever made, I thought, put me in the worst place to lose everything, and I'm not willing to do that anymore. How about you? Are you willing to go out on a limb for Jesus? Jesus went out on the cross for you. Don't take back your will. It gets ugly. But give your will over to Him. It's a beautiful thing. It's delicious. Like eating watermelon on a hot summer day. I'm in. You're in. Who's in tonight? Raise your hand. One, two, three. No way, God. One more time. One, two, three. Because we know if you don't go with God, you're going to go with something or someone that will put you in a bad place. Would you stand up, please? I want to pray a special prayer. Just, uh, I want us to be quiet for a moment and just really just be aware of God in this place. The Holy Spirit, we just ask you to just manifest the very presence of Jesus here tonight. I ask you, Jesus, just to please show up for all of us, Lord. Holy Spirit, please come. Bring your presence and your peace and your power here.
Please, Lord, help us. Help us make the one and only decision that is right that will put us in the right place. And that is to follow you, Jesus, and to surrender our will to you so we can do the will of the Father. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come here tonight and touch everybody in a significant way tonight. That lives will be transformed, minds will be changed, hearts that are broken will be restored, lives lost will be found, darkness will be erased and replaced with the light of Jesus. Lord, I ask blessings and favor upon every man and woman here tonight. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to bring your holy fire here tonight. That as we do our best to surrender and we yield ourselves to you, we would experience you and know you more. That sobriety would grow about our walk and our relationship with you would dominate us. That we would have so much of you that when people come across us, that they would experience you, Jesus, through our lives. Forgive us our sins. Guide us, direct us, lead us, help us, Lord Jesus. Please, Lord, help us. Help us, For we're desperate for you. We're hungry for you. Please, Lord, come. Please, change us. We we'll give you all the praise. We we'll give you all the thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.